then bruised in his bosom he with bitter-toothed missile is hurt neath his helmet, from harmful pollution he is powerless to shield him, by the wonderful mandates of the loath-cursed spirit, what too long he hath holden him seemeth too small, savage he hoardeth, nor boastfully giveth gold-plated rings, won the fate of the future flouts and forgetteth since God had erst given him greatness no little, wielder of glory. His end day and ear, ten it afterward happens that the bodily dwelling fleetingly fadeth, falls into ruins, another lays hold who dolleth the ornaments, the nobleman's jewels, nothing lamenting, heedeth no terror. O, oh, Beowulf dear, best of the heroes, from Bale strife defend thee, and choose thee the better, counsels eternal, be not overproud, life is fleeting, and its strength soon wasteth away. Beware of arrogance, world-famous champion. But a little while lasts thy life vigour's fullness, twill after hap early, that illness or sword edge shall part thee from strength, or the grasp of the fire, or the wave of the current, or clutch of the edges, or flight of the war-spear, or age with its horrors, or thine eyes bright flashing shall fade into darkness, twill happen full early, excellent hero, that death shall subdue thee. So the Danes a half-century I held under heaven, helped them in struggles against many a race in Middle-earth's regions, with ashwood and edges, that enemies none on earth molested me. Lo! Offsetting change, now, came to my manor, grief after joyance, when Grendel became my constant visitor, inveterate hater, I from that malice continually travailed with trouble no little. Thanks be to God that I gained in my lifetime, to the Lord everlasting, to look on the gory head with mine eyes, after long-lasting sorrow. Go to the bench now, battle adorned, joy in the feasting, of jewels in common we'll meet with many when morning appeareth. The Geatman was gladsome, ganged he immediately to go to the bench, as the clever one bade him. Then again as before were the famous for prowess, hall inhabitors, handsomely banqueted, feasted anew. The night veil fell then dark o'er the warriors. The courtiers rose then, the grey-haired was anxious to go to his slumbers, the hoary old Silding. Hankered the Geatman, the champion doughty, greatly, to rest him, an earlman early outward did lead him, fifty fagged from his fairing, from far country springing, who for etiquette's sake all of a liegeman's needs regarded, such as seamen at that time were bounden to feel. The big-hearted rested, the building up towered, spacious and gilded, the guest within slumbered, till the sable-clad raven blithely foreboded the beacon of heaven. Then the bright shining sun all the bottoms came going, the warriors hastened, the heads of the peoples were ready to go again to their peoples, the high-mooded fairer would far away thence would look for his vessel. The valiant one bad then. Offspring of Eklaf, off to bear hunting, to take his weapon, his well-beloved iron, he him thanked for the gift, saying good he accounted the war friend and mighty, nor chid he with words then the blade of the brand, t'was a brave-mooded hero. When the warriors were ready, arrayed in their trappings, the atheling deer to the Daneman advanced then on to the dais, where the other was sitting, grim-mooded hero, greeted King Hrothgar.